see some clean old fashioned respect and a lot of tradition on the field on yeah. Saturday night in Tuscaloosa when number one Oklahoma rolls into Bryant Denny Stadium to take on Alabama. Brody Croyle, who's a tied quarterback and got his baptism last year against the Sooners in a brief appearance, said the Tide has unfinished business with the Sooners. Okay. Can they finish it? I think they can. I think they're going to be able to keep it close, and that's with Shaw Williams, the running back. And he's going to be Brody Croyle's best friend tomorrow. He's going to have to get him the ball, not only by handing it to him, but he's got enough wiggle that he can just dump it to him on the outside where he can pick up some first downs and move the chains. I'm going to answer Reese's question. They can't answer it. I mean, they're not going to finish that business. And I think the reason why is up front Oklahoma defensively. Dan Cody, I think, has made that front four even better. We know about Tommy Harris. You're going to see in the first quarter what's going to happen in this game. I think the front seven of Oklahoma shut down Shaw Williams in the running game of Alabama and then they can get the blitz package in Brody Coyle 200 yards passing last week I think they'll get that pressure on him and be able to shut down that offense of Alabama we will be able to see all of the action like in Tuscaloosa. Is that okay? Sure. Okay, sure. all right. Well, yeah, I, we like a little spirited debate between you two guys. You know, that, that happens around here from time to time. Well, I just... 7.45 Eastern Time on Saturday night. Following the college game day scoreboard, it'll be... Oh, I was just listening. We all do. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's true. Most <laughs> people do. Oklahoma and Alabama at 7.45 on Saturday night. Joining us now, the head coach of the Sooners, Bob Stoops. Bob, thanks for being with us. Good to visit with you guys. We have all of the hype coming into this game, two tradition-laden programs, all the national championships the two programs have shared. How can you sense from your team that a particular game might get them a little more revved up? Well, you, you could tell uh, really early on in the week the, the bounce in their step, their attention, uh, the, the, the intensity in practice and their focus and and they uh, they recognize Alabama with the great tradition of, of championships that they have and coming down here that, that they need to be ready to play coach last week Jason White comes back throws for 250 yards does a nice job but the running game was a bit ineffective is the running game where it needs to be and if not how do you get it there well it, it isn't yet uh, I think that's something that can you just need to continue continually fine-tune and, and push for we had a better week in practice. I, I think, uh, you know, uh, the intensity finishing blocks, uh, a little more paying closer attention to all of that. Uh, you know, and, and I, I don't know that we started off a year ago with, with our running game, what it was by mid-year and later on. So I think that's something that hopefully we'll continue to progress as we go through the year. We'll push for it for sure. Coach, your defense played extremely well last week, particularly in the first three quarters, limiting North Texas to just 50 yards. Facing Alabama is a different animal how about Shaw Williams is he the player that you most have to stop that you have to stop first and foremost in the running game or the special teams game definitely um, both he's he's in a very explosive uh, big big play type guy uh, they want to establish an attitude and toughness of running the football uh, which is uh, you know what they want to do first uh, so we definitely have to be great against the run game and, and focus in on Williams and make sure we're tough there and and then take away uh, you know then and, and then when you you know hopefully uh, again get pressure to the quarterback when, when you do put him in passing situations. Bob, we've heard it mentioned a lot. The first number one team not named Alabama to play in Bryant-Denny Stadium. Have you mentioned that to the guys? Uh, no, uh, not really. We, that doesn't, you know, much matter anything to us. You know, they, they're an ec excellent program with a great tradition as we are. Uh, let's go out there and play and, and, and give it the best we've got and see what's out there, you know. But all the, all the other stuff around it we don't much care about. Coach, how comfortable are you with the depth at your quarterback position? We know the history of Jason White. Matter of fact, it was in this game that he hurt his knee. Are you comfortable with Paul Thompson if you need to go there? Well, he looked really good in his, uh, our first game a week ago. He got in and uh, engineered a scoring drive right down the field. I think it was five for six. Uh, also pulled the ball down and ran and created a few plays on his own. Uh, we are. Paul looked a lot more confident and relaxed and poised back there from a year ago and, and feel good about his progress and, and the way he's uh, preparing and playing so far. Coach, you stated that this is the best defense you've had at Oklahoma. What makes this defense better than the ones you've had in years past? Well, you're, I, everyone wants to. I said it has a chance to be. I always <laughs> mention it has a chance to be. Uh, because I don't ever put uh, the cart in front of the horse. They, uh, you know, they have to earn that. And we've had some good ones, and, and there's been some great ones through the history here, you know, in our tradition. So uh, it's working its way to being that. You know, the only reason we say that is because of the experience, the number of starters back and the experience back, it has a chance to be if we'll play to that level. And, but you have to earn, you have to earn those, uh, those remarks by the end of the year. Bob, ought to be a great one on Saturday night. We're looking forward to it. Thanks for taking some time with us.
Okay, good to visit with you guys. By number one, Oklahoma, the perfect antidote for an embarrassing offseason and the centerpiece of today's college football landscape. to the quad on Alabama's campus in the long history of this program. They've been number one lots of times, but they've never welcomed a number one to Tuscaloosa. Part of the Sooner Nation is here. You just can't tell them apart. Crimson all over the place in anticipation of tonight's primetime showdown on ESPN. And Mike Shula, at age 39, brings the team out through that tunnel at Bryant-Denny for the first time. A dry day in T-Town. That's Finally. good news for us. Finally. Welcome back. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreet. I think our pal Bubba said it pretty well in the song there. Separating contenders from pretenders. That's what September's all about. Well, you know what? From my coaching experience, I found that if teams that are equal, the team that's played a game has the advantage over a team that has its first game, and this is why. When you play a game, your weaknesses are exposed, either scheme-wise or personnel, and you can change them right away. And Kirk, if you make mistakes, you change them right then. I'm looking at two games that are going to test that third today. One team is small favorite. I think wins big. One team's uh -oh. a big favorite. Upset. Upset. We'll Upset. find out. We'll you're going to give us that a little bit later. Jeez. The thing that I was reminded in the first week of college football, once again, defense is king. If you want to watch this year in college football, see who's going to win those conference championships. See who's going to be in the mix for the BCS. Watch the defenses of the top 21 defenses in the country. 20 of those teams won, and of course, Ohio State, Oklahoma, Miami, and USC, the top four teams in the country, very impressive starts. You want to win games, play great defense, that's the answer. Get a little defense here tonight in this yeah, game. Huh? Oh, yeah, big Once time. again, uh, thrilled to welcome Rocket Ismail, new yeah. member of our game day team. Besides these big matchups, there's a lot of really good individual subplots in these games today. Man, in the Miami-Florida Gators game, Brock Berlin faces his former teammates. I'm interested to see if he's going to try. That overrated. But now to the collision of Crimson tonight. Bama versus Boomer Sooner. Bud versus the Bear. Rich living legacies from programs near the top in all-time wins and bowl appearances. Oklahoma versus Alabama. That has a really attractive but still unfamiliar sound to it. These programs share so much history, but they've only shared the same field three times before. The Sooners are the most popular pick to play for the national title game, but this is where the toughest road obstacle in last season, they closed with two out of three losing on the road. On campus debut for Mike Shula, whose last game here was as a tied quarterback in a narrow escape against Temple. They ain't playing Temple tonight, but his Dallas team is filled with belief after really outplaying the Sooners last year in Norman. This is what we want. You know, we want to play the best of best. We want to find out where we're at. So, uh, you know, 
the guys, these guys coming in this weekend are uh, definitely uh, deserving of their number one ranking. We've been in a lot of strong, great stadiums uh, here at Oklahoma, and, and you know this is another one. So uh, once we get on the field, it's business as usual, and uh, but in, and we understand what kind of environment it is, but I, I think we're used to that. That's what's exciting about this job, uh, to be able to, you know, hey, you're playing on national TV, you're you're um, playing against the number one team in the country. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. But here's some history, Coach. The last half century, six out of the seven tied coaches lost their first game versus a ranked opponent. And that runs the gamut from Paul Bryant to old ears Whitworth. Bill Curry, the one exception. Talked to Gene Stallings, who started 0-3 his first year. He said there is no such thing as a no-pressure game here at Alabama. The best thing for Shula against South Florida is that he didn't lose that game. Also another good thing for Shula, Dennis Francione built this football team and he won 17 <laughs> games with it in the last two years. So they've got some talent here. But Mike Shula did a good job of keeping good people around him. He hired three former head coaches in college, Joe Kynes, Doug Ryder, and Sparky Woods. Now Kirk, I think those guys with experience helped them score 20, 33 unanswered points last week and win that ball game. He's smart, that Shula. Well, you're bringing up Franchetti, do you want to drop a war eagle on him? Not <laughs> the way you did in <laughs> preseason. All right, All right. The, the reason I like this Alabama football team is the perseverance of the football players. Look at all the distractions that they've had to deal with in the last four years. They've been put on probation. They can't compete for a conference championship. They can't go to a bowl game. Three coaches in less than a year. The one thing that remains constant are the Alabama football players. Despite the distractions, when you talk to the players, there's a look in their eye. When I visited campus here about two weeks ago, you talk to some of the players. Players, that's when I could tell that Alabama, despite all these problems off the field, they're going to have a good year. You combine the attitude of the players, and you combine that with the fact this is still Alabama. They still recruit great football players. Alabama's going to have a great win. They can, the great year. They can win eight games this year. You know, lesser program with less pride would have collapsed because no yes. program has been through more no. in the last few years yep. than this program has, certainly. They have a lot of young talent on this team. You're right, Kirk. Ten starters are either sophomores or freshmen, and that's important. They're going to have to have young talent gaining experience because they're going to start to feel that's right. the severe hits from probation. A total of 21 scholarships. they got six more next year. They're going to really feel more impact from that in the coming years, but they've shown toughness and resilience. They're going to need a lot more. Ahead a lot more on this game, the tied playmaker, Shawd Williams. He's survived a rocky career journey and how sooner Teddy Lehman used his wheels to go from small town to big time. But now, also knows that tonight Alabama must avoid a recurring pattern. Slow offensive starts. They had to climb out of a 20-point hole in Norman last year. They had 29 miserable minutes last week in offense. Their first three drives netted 15 yards. Took a while for Brody Croyle to settle down. Can't happen tonight because Oklahoma will swarm at you with a star from every position on defense, including Teddy Lehman. He's big and he's pale, but he's very, very fast. And Bob Holtzman tells the story of how two-tenths of a second paved Lehman's path from a small town to the big time. <laughs> He's not normal. Uh, you know, anybody that weighs, you know, 250 and runs, uh, you know, sub 4-4, four, four, I mean, something's wrong. It's a talent that almost went unnoticed. Before Teddy Lehman became an All-American linebacker, he was a small-town high school star in Fort Gibson, Oklahoma, getting no interest from recruiters and having no idea how to create any. There weren't never any good players come out of my high school, really. There, I mean, big-time players, so it really, you know, no one knew what it took. You know, I know there was a lot of dismay there as far as, as far as myself and the coaching staff that we just felt like, you know, we felt like we really had had the real deal on our hands. Teddy has always been that guy that is not going to go unnoticed. He is going to make something happen somewhere, sometime. Lehman wound up here at Oklahoma not because of anything he did on the field in Fort Gibson, but because of one answer on an OU questionnaire. It asked for his time in the 40-yard dash. His response? 4-3. Sooners coaches didn't believe it, so they invited him to their high school football camp to clock it for themselves. More often than not, uh, somebody that says they run a 4-3 from Fort Gibson, Oklahoma, has no credibility. He came over and he's like, what, so what do you think you're going to run? I said, I don't know, probably, hopefully under 4-4 four, four, four or under. And he started laughing. He's like, yeah, right. I bet you won't run anything under 4-6. 
The first one, he, he ripped off a, a high 4 threes and 4 3 eight. Coach Venable said, look, that, this can't be right. Run it again. So I ran it again, and there's some more coaches over there. And then I ran, like, like 4 3 eight, And then the next one was, like, 4 3 seven. So They kept making me go back. Then we got every coach in the building uh, to get a watch on him. And the highest was a 4 4 one. So we all started realizing what incredible speed and, and explosiveness Teddy had. What are we waiting for? Uh, you know, it was pretty much a slam dunk. Two days later, Oklahoma offered him a scholarship. And Lehman thought that would be his story's happy ending. I was just hoping to go somewhere. I didn't even think I'd ever play anywhere. I was like, man, I can, I know I'm, I'm a pretty good athlete. I know I can play special teams somewhere. So that's all, that's what I was really hoping for. In the four years since, Lehman has become perhaps the best linebacker in college football. A Buckus Award finalist last season and an almost certain NFL millionaire next year. You keep setting your goals higher and higher and, and you know, the more goals you reach, the sooner or later you're way up there and it just feels good when all that hard work pays off for you. Lehman went out and won the 100 meter state championship for Fort Gibson there. The motto is on your questionnaire, don't try to BS the coaches about your speed because they're going to be there with a watch. And they'll go oh, and get yeah. a lot of fast guys. Well, they, they've had fast guys since the Supes brothers were able to run this football team and, and the defense. You think about what Oklahoma does on defense. It's all about pressure and confusion. Build around this zone blitz principle. And let's take a look at our EA Sports virtual playbook for this week. This is the fun stuff for me. This is what oh, it's yeah. all about. You got your defense aligned for the Oklahoma Sooners, the linebackers in the secondary. Now, when you blitz, you think about being in man coverage. But here, here's an outside linebacker blitzing. What the quarterback doesn't realize is the end's dropping. The offensive line is confused with the pressure. There's Pasha Jackson. Boom, on the big sack against Brody Croyle. Now, here comes that same blitz. Notice Dan Cody dropping back into coverage. Quarterback doesn't see him. Croyle drops back, confused by what Oklahoma's doing with the defense, and again, thinks it's man-to-man, -man, but it's zone, and there's Cody with an interception. Oklahoma's been doing this for years. It's built, again, on trying to confuse the quarterback and the offensive line. Now, last year, this zone blitz defense that Mike Stoops had gave up some big plays through the, by, by the passing game. Not this year. Dante Nicholson will be inserted. Keep an eye on him in, in this football game. Number eight, they, they say he's a lot like Roy Williams. He's that good a player. Yeah. Oklahoma's defense is oh, loaded with superstars. I think they got the best defensive back in the nation in Derek Strait. Now, Derek Strait can play special teams. Watch this hit where he knocks the receiver down and causes a fumble. This is a number one player. Wow, what a shot. Now, he also is the co-leader in pass deflections in the history of Oklahoma defense. Now, Alabama plays with great pride. They had a wonderful game last week. They will have wonderful crowd tonight. Alabama will run the ball and roll tide, and they'll give that Oklahoma defense all they can handle. You better but, watch out, Oklahoma. But. Alabama's ready. Oh, that's a tease. No, that's, oh. too, that's too It's obvious. not time for predictions just that. yet. But there is some news. Brandon Everidge, the, the fine Oklahoma DB, pretty much hit for the cycle. He had like five traffic citations, license, insurance, tags, an open container. What's his status? He's not going to start tonight, but he will play. Probably second, third series. They, Brandon Everidge will be back, number seven, to go along with uh, Dante Nicholson. Great secondary. All right, you're going to have to tease this crowd some more. They did boo a video game, by the way, right here. We're going to come <laughs> back. We've got predictions and a recap of uh, today's big games. We continue from Tuscaloosa. Of football you need a clicker or multiple sets abc <laughs> has the canes and gators espn 2 7 15 eastern maryland florida state and espn prime time right here oklahoma alabama the sooners trying to clear a major hurdle on the route to the national title game alabama trying for a landmark win what do you say well alabama went to norman last year and kept this football game close and i think because of that success they believe did you know the last team to win a national championship after losing to an unranked opponent was Oklahoma in 1985? That Sooner squad lost the second year coach Jimmy Johnson and Miami. That's good. Number one team in the land, Oklahoma. For the first time ever, a visiting team in Tuscaloosa ranked number one. Take on Alabama. Mike Shula making his debut in Bryant Denny Stadium and walking in. It was a sea of crimson, even for the visitors. Crimson on all sides. And this was a hard-hitting affair. Roman Harper drilling Mark Clayton. Hello, sweet daddy. 6-0 OU lead. And Mark Bradley introducing himself to Triando Sloop. 6-3 game. The Sooners 
then go up top as they did a year ago. I thought Jason White played very well. Nice protection. We see it here, 46 yards to Mark Clayton. Oklahoma's up by 10, 13-3. Alabama still trailing by 10. White had a huge game. Brody Croyle had a few near misses, did not miss here. Luke in the end zone. Croyle was 24-42, buck 94. It's a three-point game. But Jason White looking for Brandon Jones. Boy, White's been very good throwing the ball in the first Perfect. two games. 21-35, 259 yards. And Oklahoma, the 20-10 lead. Alabama had a field goal, couldn't get the onside kick afterwards. 20 to 13, the number one team gets it done. Let's go down now to Tuscaloosa, our college game day guys. Chris Fowler, Kirk Herbstreit, and Lee Corso enjoyed this one. Reese, we sure did. The Sooner fans have kind of taken over the quad here in Tuscaloosa. For Alabama fans, as you mentioned, a lot to be proud of, even though they come up a touchdown short. We expected smothering Oklahoma defense. We got that. Quick strike offense and rock solid special teams, the aspect that let them down a year ago against Bama, also part of the plan. Well, and the other thing is Bob Stoops and, and the fact that Bob Stoops is willing to take chances. If you watch this game, you had Oklahoma battling great defense, but Alabama was hanging around, and when they scored a touchdown, the momentum swung towards the tide. Crowd got back into the game in the third quarter, and Oklahoma faced a fourth and 10 on their own 31. Keep in <laughs> mind, Bama had just scored great time on your own 31 on fourth and 10 for a fake punt. Crowds in the game, they're now gone. The next play, we always talk about it, Lee, you go for the jugular after a big momentum swing. And Brandon Jones, the lot of man coverage from Alabama, and they paid for it there. But how about Bob Stoops willing to take that chance on fourth and 10 deep in his own territory when Alabama looked like they were trying to get back into that football game? A risk that worked, and he was pretty confident with his chances there. Well, he coaches to win and not to avoid no the question. loss, but how many coaches would make that call in America? Nobody. You could lose Nobody. the game. Remember last year at Missouri, fake field goal, touchdown Does pass, a time. huge play. Afterwards, Stoops explained his gamble. Well, they weren't guarding our wing, and they were just rushing everybody off the side, so we didn't feel like that was that was correct. We ought to take advantage of it. Coach Venables had a great deal drawn up earlier in the week, and it worked, fortunately. We're, we're lucky. <laughs> Cajonis is the word. Yeah. You, can, you can take a few gambles when your defense is that good, can't you? And when you make over a million dollars a year with a long-term <laughs> contract. That's another factor why he faked that punt. But Oklahoma's defense was extended tonight by this Alabama's balanced offense. But in the clutch, the big plays were made by Lance Mission, number 10, the one linebacker, and then Teddy Lehman, number 11. They stuffed the run really well. Then watch this play by Dante Nicholson, number eight. Ooh, you notice the score, 20 to 10, Alabama's going down there. Now, Alabama's defense is as good as advertised. Their offense, special teams very good. They got to get better offensively if they're gonna win the national title. Meanwhile, while that game was going on, they have, we'll have more from the quad of Tuscaloosa with the tie for victorious back now to the studio, Reese and the guys. All right, Chris, thank you very much. The Oklahoma offense, let's go back to that Oklahoma-Alabama game for just a little bit. We talked to Bob Stoops on Friday night. He said his running game wasn't exactly where he wanted right. it to be. What were your impressions of the Sooner offense? Well, they needed a passing game without a doubt, and I think this all goes back to offensive coordinator Chuck Long, runner-up in the Heisman Trophy when he was at Iowa. Go back to Jason White, not this week, but last week against North Texas. Here's a quarterback that was coming back off of injury that finally found his way throwing the football, not just throwing the football, but a vertical passing game for Oklahoma. It carried over this week when they needed to throw the ball deep. Jason White was the person that they had to have at the quarterback position, and he filled the bill this week. He came up with the big plays when he had to. And if you're an Alabama fan, sure, you're upset that you lost the game, but I think you've got to be pretty pleased with Brody Croyle and the way that he handled this offense. I mean, under constant pressure, moving around, and in a game that it's all about big plays. We've talked about the fake punt. We've talked about 47-yard touchdown passes from Jason White. But how many times did Zach Fletcher be right there on the sideline? He catched the ball. One of them, he was in bounds. It was that close. Alabama was that close to making the plays to get it done. That's why Oklahoma's ranked number one. That's why Bob Stoops always wins these games. They find a way to get make those big plays to win these big games just a remarkable call a guy you yes, know we was. asked one time what a coach needed to make a call like Bob Stoops made on the fake punt and the answer was job security yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stoops has plenty of that for sure Oklahoma winning by a touchdown another team one of those games yeah. we see Oklahoma's defense all over the place just dominate they well, do they're quick, yeah, they're quick. They're so much check, check this out Coach, huh? We 
ain't gonna be it. You stand to get so out, Tim Dia. Find me now. I thought Coach Stoops was tough. When college game days on campus, you gotta step it up. ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot, 10:30 Saturday mornings on ESPN.